This is the Data Download, your guide to upping your game when it comes to managing and accessing data in your organization. For Calibra, I'm your host, Jay Miller. All right. Hey, Stan. Hey, Jay. All right. So, uh, so Stan, I had, I had a few questions for you. You're our chief data citizen here at Calibra. So can you tell us what that means? Uh, what, what does the term data citizen mean? That's a good question, uh, Jay. Thanks. And I've had a lot of hats in Calibra and really happy to be having, I think, the only chief data citizen hat in the world at this time. Uh, and, and we'll dive into that a little bit. But um, for us at Calibra, we like to think of a data citizen as anyone who uses data to do their job. And if you think about today's organizations, that's a lot of people. Obviously, Everybody is thinking about, you know, data scientists and data engineers and analysts, um, but it goes much broader than that, right? There's people who are somehow entering data in, in yeah. their uh, systems uh, that, that they use every day. There's people who are consuming reports to make decisions and a whole bunch of uh, other stakeholders, for example, people who deal with privacy issues from a legal context, for example, or security, all of those um, are people who use data to do, do their job, and we call them uh, data citizens. The hmm. reason we do that is because we want to make very clear when it comes to building a data intelligent organization, everyone in the organization who touches data has to um, understand that data is an asset to you know, get advantages out of, but also to take care of in some way. Right, right. So, so it Sounds like there are there are all sorts of different kinds of data citizens, right? Um, you know, you mentioned data scientists and and those sorts of things, but really everybody is a data citizen. Sounds like all of this relates to you know what we would call data literacy skills, right? Throughout throughout an organization, right? So tell me tell me a little bit more about like the different kinds of data citizens and how does that relate to skills that people have to have, no matter what your role is. Yeah, yeah. So I think at at a minimum. Uh, it starts by, quote unquote, being aware that you are a data citizen, right? So there is data in the organization. Uh, I can find it. I can understand it. I can use it in some way. I, there, I have certain responsibilities about it. For example, mm -hmm. I shouldn't just copy it around. So there's a base <laughs> level of knowledge around data that right. you should uh, have, and that starts with awareness. Um, but then it fans out, I would say, to, in um, – uh, depending on where you are in the organization. So let's imagine that you're uh, an executive uh, and you're being served with um, beautiful self-service BI dashboards in your right. favorite tool. Right. right. Um, and, you know, they show the most magnificent uh, bar charts and, and pie charts. I'm a big fan of, of pie charts. Let me rephrase. I'm a big fan <laughs> of pie, not pie charts. Um, but uh, so... You know, as that executive, you're supposed to know certain things about how you um, analyze that uh, report in front of you. So, right, right. you know, you're supposed to know biases. You're supposed to be asking some questions about maybe underlying assumptions, right? You're supposed to be able to interpret trends. Uh, you know, what if the line is linear versus extra uh, exponential? These are all skills that, that you as, a, as an executive in that sense should have. So that you can distill the insight in that report into a, a meaningful decision. Let's say you're a data scientist, for example. Well, you know, machine learning models and regression and uh, retraining and, and monitoring and production and going from Python to a data engineered live data product. Uh, let's say you're um, a regular analyst. Then it boils down to knowing what data is available, know how you, how you can process it, how you can access it. Uh, right. how you should turn that raw data into that insight. So I would say that um, everyone in the organization, depending on their role, they have different lit data literacy skills that they should uh, learn and keep current because there's always new um, right. skills out there. Right. There, there, there's always new, new things to, to learn. Um, so, so your role, you talked about role. So your role as chief data citizen, right? Tell, tell us about what that role entails for you uh, you know I, I get to work for you so so i know a little bit but let, let's let's expand on that you know is this is this another name for a chief data officer tell, tell us more yep so um we're going back a few years not too many mm -hmm. um our organization was growing so systems and processes became more important 
and we sort of said, okay, it's time to put our money where uh, to put our money where our mouth is, and set up our own data office, uh, just like so many of our customers uh, already have, and just like so many organizations, ultimately, you know, just like they have HR and finance, etc., they'll have a data office. Maybe it has a different name, and they'll have somebody who leads that data office. So typically, that's that's um, um, a chief data officer or some similar kind of. A beautiful title and their responsibility if i summarize it is to make everyone in the organization think about money uh, sorry about data as an asset mm -hmm. just like the cfo does that for money right so uh, for a cfo they make you think about you know expenses and budgeting processes for the cdo it's sort of similar but then for the data asset um so then uh, felix and i were talking and Felix uh, said, okay, you can run the data office um, and let's call you the chief data citizen. So we purposefully chose not to call my, my title the chief data officer because we want to be very clear at Colibra to say, okay, it, the data citizen is important, right? So when you consider the data asset, you have to consider the people that will operate that data asset in some way, those data citizens. So for us, it's really a clear message we want to bring to the market um, the data citizen is important and it's the leader of the data office, the chief data uh, officer, the chief data citizen, call it whatever you want. It's their role to make that awareness about the data asset happen. So uh, how uh, do we translate that into Colibra? When I took yeah. on that, that role, um, I said, okay, what do I have to do here? What's the first step? And I said, uh, okay, let's first set up a data strategy. It has to fit into the business strategy, of course. Uh, and in that strategy, we said, okay, um, we'll be our own best customer. We'll build and support the building of data products because that's what uh, is the, the latest and greatest in, in CDO land, if you will. And we'll take care of our own data infrastructure at Colibra. And in doing all of that, you know, doing our best data intelligence work, uh, both product and practice uh, as well. And all of that also in a privacy aware and an ethically aware uh, context. Um, so that's my responsibility as a chief data citizen at Colibra. At, you know, very generic level, we're trying to make everyone think about data as an asset uh, in the company, all the data citizens. And at a specific le le um, level, it's uh, the data strategy with the three pillars that I just mentioned. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So you mentioned a few times uh, data as an asset, raising awareness around that, and re and I think really getting, let's say, intentional about treating data as an asset and you 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 threw the word money in there a few times too <laughs> <laughs> right so let's what are your thoughts around how to how to be intentional visible and let's say measurable around around data products and you know you know elevating from asset to product and that kind of product thinking what's what, what are your thoughts on that so I have a whole bunch of thoughts around it, and I'm a, a big fan. So data product comes back in a number of um, trends in our industry. So you see it, for example, in the uh, MIT data monetization framework. Uh, you see it pop out in, in, in Gartner's CDO uh, version 4, which is all about data products. Uh, you see it come up in um, the data mesh um, uh, approach, which is gaining in popularity still and will continue to do so. So you see it as a trend in, in various parts of our industry, which means, okay, it's not just, you know, one person's idea, but it's actually a, almost a movement that's happening in the industry. And the reason for that, I believe, is because um, I've experienced that if you talk to business stakeholders, especially mm -hmm. the ones maybe who did their MBA, I don't know, 30 years ago or something like that, Mm -hmm. uh, or even more recent, data hasn't always been a topic in people's education not in their school, but also maybe not in their job. So for a lot of people who've never ran a SQL query, uh, they think maybe data is this magical sauce uh, that mm. almost automatically does things for them. But it takes a lot of work. Mm. It can be quite mm -hmm. messy. So for them, oftentimes data can be a very alien concept, uh, almost um, something that they're not you know, closely familiar with. Um, and in that sense, when you want to convince business stakeholders like that to invest in data, you have to show to them and uh, how data is, 
you know, going to speak in their language. And business stakeholders know the language of money, obviously, right? They're offering value to their customers and, 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 and their citizens, etc. And in that sense, they're used to working with products and services, you know, the products and services that they offer to their customers. And then if you think about data as a product, a data product, then that's the shortest conceptual distance between the data and the dollar, right? Because now the business stakeholder knows I'm making and offering this data product and it solves a certain problem. So there's a value uh, chain there. Now, uh, if I break it down a little bit, a data product could be data itself. You could sell data itself. It could be a, a report. It could be an insight. It could be something that you use to offer a better uh, consulting service or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a wide variety of uh, what a data product could be. But in the essence, it's really about, uh, okay, very clear value. You know, what is what problem does the data uh, product solve and for whom? That's one part. And another part is the, uh, the, the, the process thinking around it almost. Um, I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit, Chase. So a lot of times when you have people who picked up a new self-service BI skill, Power BI, Tableau, what have you, they just start slapping dashboards together. Remember those yeah. beautiful pie charts we talked about earlier? And, and they, they can look really great, right? Um, but it's not because you've built a dashboard like that, that somebody's actually using that, that it's actually solving a problem. Maybe it's just a pretty picture. Maybe it's even a picture that's picturing something wrong, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when you apply the product thinking around it, you quickly step into the discipline of, of product management, for example, right. which teaches you, um, okay, who is actually going to be a stakeholder, user, consumer, what have you, of this product, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what problem is that product going to solve for them? Uh, so you have a whole uh, aspect of the ideation, the creation of a product, and a bunch of steps in between, typically with prototypes and iteration and, you know, feedback and monitoring how it's used in production and, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, at the end of such a process, there's also a sunsetting. Sometimes products, you know, are um, deprecated by their future versions or they're just not necessary. It's not, not necessary you know, to solve that problem anymore. Problem is exactly. solved. Exactly. Right? So oh, there's a better way to solve that Data product problem. is about that value mm -hmm. and about that process um, to really treat the data as it should be treated to get to those outcomes. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it almost seems like, uh, let's say we talked about data literacy skills, skills for different roles around an organization for all kinds of data citizens. I guess data people need product management skills too, right? Uh, something that may not be native to, to data thinking, uh, right? So, so profit and loss, return on your return on investment in, in making that data product uh, a high quality data product. So there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of need, I think, for, for education on these sorts of skills out there. That's great. Hey, so let's let's get back to that data citizen term. We we at Calibra have a, uh, a you know an annual data citizens conference, and you, you know so you're you're a co-founder. So tell us tell us a little bit. I'm I'm really curious. T tell us about the very first data citizens conference. Why why do we call it that? What what happened? Ooh, Jay, now you're testing my brain. <laughs> <laughs> the very first one. So. Uh... I don't even know when was that again. It must have been something like 2017 or 2018, okay. something in that vicinity. Um, so, yes, we've been throwing a conference like that every year, right? And the mm -hmm. idea is all the stakeholders that uh, are in our customers get together uh, mm -hmm. and they learn from each other, right? So it's a unique conference in the sense that there, there's all these peers on this data intelligence topic. And they're all, you know, maybe they're a newly minted CDO. Maybe they have like five years of experience. Maybe they're more coming from a privacy background or a data science background. So it's really a mix of data people. Um, and um, since we started doing it again, 2016, 17, 18, I'll have to look it up and, uh, and confirm that with you. Uh, but for us, when we did that, Calibra was a bit smaller still then. Right. So it was, it was a big endeavor. It was the first time that we as an organization would uh, organize such an event. Um, and when we organized it, um, what we noticed is that 
people really loved it. Uh, they loved to be able to learn from each other in this evolving uh, data profession, if you will. And then we asked feedback. Uh, we said, okay, what, do you, what did you think about it? And the main feedback that we got was we want to see more customers on the stage and we want mm. more time to network and learn from our peers. So mm. the next year, that like the second time that we organized it, um, mm. we put more customers on the stage and made more time to network. As for feedback, same feedback, more customers, more time to network. <laughs> and that's been going on ever since. So wow. from that, we, we took away that this data citizenship is, is a real thing, right? People need to feel some kind of uh, kinship, need to learn from each other in, in this uh, evolving profession. And we've been just making it bigger every year. Um, we've had some downturns, like uh, when COVID hit, unfortunately, there was no more physical activity. So we took it online. And we've also done like many data citizens events. We've done... Uh, earlier in the year, we did a tour where we did, uh, I believe, London, Amsterdam, Paris, and uh, Munich, if I'm not mistaken, or Frankfurt, my bad. And I'm really looking forward to this time in a couple of weeks in uh, San Diego to um, yes. the big sunny Data Citizens event. Yes, me too. Me too. I can't wait. Uh, so the, the theme of this year's conference is called uh, Thrive with Data. So what... You know, not just to drive your organization with data, right? But to thrive. So, what does that mean to you? You know, maybe we can give a, a little uh, thought now about what what that means, best practices uh, on how to thrive with data. What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, when I think about thrive, I think about uh, not just using something, right, but really making a lot of progress uh, for it. Um, so that's both at an individual level, right? So imagine that your data profession X Y Z. And this, you're really at the edge, like, for example, for chief data officers, they're really at the edge of a, a newly evolving discipline. This, this job, if you will, is only about 10, 15 years old, right, where it went from just a handful of them to now over 20,000. Um, so you want to thrive as an individual in that newly developing uh, uh, career. But then also you want to have your organization thrive because of those data products that you make, right? So when you... When, when you talk about best practice, you'll see me take it back to that monetization aspect, which I think is crucial, it needs to be part of any data strategy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how, you know, that's where the data products and that process and the responsibility around it. Yep. Yeah. So you, you and I lead this data office here. Uh, how do you think we're doing? <laughs> right. Are we, are we thriving with data? How, how are we doing that? What are we, what are we doing to drive uh, and thrive uh, using data? Well, thoughts? when I compared it to before we started the data office uh -huh. or in the very early uh -huh. days when it was um, a skeleton crew being just me and a, and a colleague, um, well, you know, I wouldn't say that we were necessarily thriving. People were doing stuff with data and that was working. But when I took on the role and we set up the data office and I started looking into this a little bit closer, I realized, okay, there's a lot of progress we can make here, right? There's a lot of maturity we can increase. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration uh, we can facilitate between colleagues and departments and processes. And there's probably a lot more advantages that we can get a, uh, out of it. So are we thriving right now? I think in a number of ways, we've I've seen some very exciting data products come out. They're internal, right? So like um, the churn model uh, that we worked on with Spencer um, or the other uh, propensity to buy model, the maturity index that we're working on. So some really exciting internal data products, hopefully uh, soon some external ones as well. Um, and we've also seen that connective, the connective tissue of uh, data citizens across the organization grow. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it, Jay, right? So uh, new people come into Colibra. Um, you don't know them, we don't know them, but we now have this community of data analysts across the company uh, where we regularly share stories like hey how did you do this what did you work on oh that's interesting maybe we should collaborate you get sort of that serendipity of having that network of data citizens yeah absolutely i think that's the, the thing that was that that's been most pleasantly not not surprising but uh let's say that the thing that i love to watch them the most is is that community of analytics professionals all around the organization succeeding with data that they get to manage 
right? Uh, that they get to produce their own data products uh, for, for their different, let's say, departments, right? Whether it's, you know, product operations or marketing or, or, or sales or otherwise, uh, that's, it's, it's exciting to, to get to, well, to help them, to enable them, uh, and, and to, you know, hear them talk. They get to be the heroes, right? Uh, about, about, you know, for their, for their groups. So that, I, I feel like it, it is thriving. I, I think we have some work to do ourselves on that ROI measure, uh, front, right? Uh, so we we certainly do, and we're and we're, uh, we're we're looking forward to gearing that up too. What else? Well, uh, if I think about the driving a little bit more, like you said, there's always more work to do. There's <clears throat> new people who join. There's new skills to always learn. There's new data products to continuously make. And when mm-hmm. you've set up certain processes, like for example, earlier in the year we were working on uh, trusted business reporting, which is a very popular case with our customers too. Uh, and it takes me back to some of the early days of Kudibra. I think okay. in maybe even 2009 or something, uh, you know, back when dinosaurs were speaking. And <laughs> we were seeing with some of our early um, customers, use cases like an executive getting reports in from, let's say, five or so uh, of their director, um, direct reports. And the number being very different. Uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking a very simple example, but uh, also probably one that will feel familiar to a lot of people. So imagine you're a CEO and you're asking how many customers do you have, right? And then maybe your finance person says, oh, we have 5,000 customers. And your salesperson says, we have 500,000 customers. Now you're a CEO. So you're thinking, okay, if we have 5,000 customers, I need to hire more salespeople. If we have 500,000 customers, I maybe need to hire more support people, right? So it's the decisions are couldn't be more different. Um, and turns out what's happened with the self-service BI situation, now everybody can make those dashboards and there's not necessarily that data product discipline around it, right? So they're, cho- they're throwing up the bar charts and the pie charts and the numbers don't add up. That, that case stuck with me. Uh, since the beginning mm-hmm. days, and I still mm-hmm. see it out there. Um, so that trusted business reporting is an approach by which you say, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to avoid this problem ever happening, right? That we're going to make sure that when an executive sees a dashboard, it's like certified gold so that right. they know where the data came from and what it means and all that good stuff. Right. Um, so that's one of the, the processes that we set up early in, in the year. And when you set it up, to go from the start and make sure everybody is adopted and all the reports are cert- certified. That's mm-hmm. one step that takes time and that takes people to get engaged. Uh, but then afterwards, new data products are, are getting built. And then you want to make sure that that's embedded in the business as usual process. So when you start one of those use cases and there's dozens of them, then you're always going to continuously try to make them better. I think that trying to make them better continuously that Kaizen or whatever you want to call it, uh, that's striving, right? Yeah, that's great. That's that's absolutely right. And and I think it works at all the levels. You know, it, it starts with the data. If we're certifying the quality of our data, right, ownership, uh, quality, thoroughness, et cetera, uh, and then different analysts are making use of that data, they're all starting from that certified, right, starting point uh, so that you've got consistent data leading to consistent KPIs and measures, right? Which then lead to consistent reporting. Uh, so, so that, that, that certification process is, is super valuable. Uh, we're, we're really proud that, uh, we're, we've been able to adopt that and, and begin rolling that out. Uh, so I'd call that thriving here. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's been a lot of, a lot of fun. And for yourself, maybe Jay, if I can bounce it back, uh, I mentioned the thriving. There's, uh, you know, as an organization, you're getting more value out of data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as a person, how do you feel having come into Kudibra? Uh, are you thriving in your data career, seeing all this happen? Yeah, well, we're doing this podcast, right? So, so absolutely, we 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 get to to speak with customers and the market about data challenges, data successes, uh, all sorts of things, and there, there is so much that we've learned in our own data office from our, our customers and, and from other partners in, in the market, uh, I have to say it has significantly accelerated our ability to thrive just by being a part of this larger community uh, where we get to 
you know, bounce ideas off of each other with, with our customers. And it's, it's a, it's a, how do I say this? It is a, um, well, the network of the community of people is, is also thriving. Right. And, and what's, what's impressive to me is the, the thirst for knowledge among everybody, whether it's on a topic of data mesh or certification uh, that we just talked about or monetization, there's, there's this desire to just learn, see what the art of the possible is, try things, experiment with things, demo to each other. And, and again, we're talking about internally here within Calibra, but also again, with, with customers and partners and, and folks are showing, showing off what they've, what they've accomplished, even if it's a prototype, even if it's a demo, even if it's, if it's a, you know, an experiment and we're all of us, we're all learning at the same time. And, exactly. uh, it's, exactly. it's, it, it accelerates each of our journeys. You're never going to be done. Right. I think we, it's like we've when said you that have, before. Um, an engineering community, you're an engineer, mm-hmm. you go work and learn with your peers because there's mm-hmm. new frameworks and now the cloud is there, et cetera. Or when you're a legal professional and you're learning from your peers, the same thing yep. is true here in this, in the data profession, in the data citizen land, if you will, and that community, we're also learning from each other. For example, what we did recently on, on um, the up and coming topic of the data mesh, right, where right. we said, okay, that's an interesting, you know, architecture as well as uh, a social uh, governance framework almost that's married at, uh, at the yep. hip. Let's apply this in our own data office, right? In the way that mm-hmm. we do data products. And then we noticed the interest with our customers and we set up a, a group to actually discuss this, right? Because this is yeah, an evolving yeah. concept. Yeah. And they're, they, they being the customers, right? So in this community that we've started, they're leading the conversation yep. with each other, with each other. And, you know, I get to be a moderator uh, and also a student uh, at the same time. So it's, that has been a blast. And, and I think the data citizens conference I'm imagining, right, this will be my first one. I'm imagining it. It'll just be a big giant version of that. Right, like you said, every every year you you've seen feed or heard feedback, more customers, more networking. Uh, right, there's there's this desire to learn, uh, and then well, and then show off, uh, and I, I think that's awesome. So so I I can't wait. Same here, actually. <laughs> it's been I've been in San Diego a lot, but it's been ages since I've been there. So yeah, apart from the conference, the location itself is um, also quite exciting. Yep, love it. Love it. Can't wait. See you next time. Okay.